Hi all, today we're going to be doing a titration, which means we're going to be mixing an acid with a base and we're going to be neutralizing the acid and base. So the acid we're going to use is oxalic acid and the base we're going to use is sodium hydroxide. Just have a look at all the stuff we've got here that's going to be used. So there we've got our burettes. Burette. We've got our retort stand and clamps. We've got a wash bottle. We've got a scale that we're going to measure out our solute or our oxalic acid. Here we've got a little stand to put our camera on. Here we've got a known volume of water. And here we've got something we're going to mix it in. Okay, so let's switch on our scale. But before we do that, let's put a piece of paper on it and switch it on going to zero itself and you'll see it comes to zero with a piece of uh, filter paper on it there it says zero so we're going to take some oxalic acid you'll see that it looks like sugar we're going to make sure that it's crushed we want it we don't want chunks of it we want approximately let's get a teaspoon of it how about that? There's a teaspoon. It looks, and we put it carefully on our scale. And it says 6,32 grams. 6,32 grams. What it's doing, I think, is as I speak, uh, my breath is pushing down on the scale. 6,34 Okay, let's take that. 6,34 grams. We're going to write that down. 6,34 grams oxalic acid. Okay, now we can switch the scale off. It's done its job. We can carefully pick up every little grain of this. And now we're going to throw it into this flat-bottomed flask. Let me put this here. So, making sure we don't lose any of it, I throw it into the flat-bottomed flask, shake it all in. Now, it would be nice if we had one of these flat flasks with a thin stem and you could just fill it up to a certain amount. But instead I'm going to have to use a measuring cylinder and I'm going to throw in, well this measures up to 250 moles. So I'm going to throw in just less than 250 moles. And we hope that it will all dissolve that the 6,34 grams of oxalic acid will dissolve in our slightly less than 250 moles of water. So the oxalic acid is the solute, the water is the solvent, and we use a, a round or an, a conical flask because when you stir it like this, the water can't be thrown out the top. If you were shaking it like this in a beaker, say, it would um, tend to, by centrifugal force, throw it out. Okay, that looks like it's more or less dissolved. There's not really any more chunks in there. So, when that's completely dissolved now, we're going to take our measuring cylinder again, as I say, because we don't have one of these that has got a nice thin stem. We need to pour it back in here. So we've left nothing behind and then I'm just going to fill it to the 250 mole level with a wash bottle. So here is what we're aiming for. A 
and we're going to make sure that the bottom of the meniscus is touching. Right. So there you can see that it's smack on that line there. There we've got a 250 mole solution. Maybe it could do with just one or two more drops. Let's see. That's pretty good, just one or two more drops. Right. So now we've got 6.34 grams of oxalic acid in 250 milliliters of water or made up to a 250 ml solution. So now we have what is known as a standard solution of oxalic acid. Right, let's take the scale out the way. Next, we are going to take a beaker. And we're going to make a sodium hydroxide solution. There are our sodium hydroxide flakes. We're going to throw, that should be easily enough. And we're going to fill that with water. So let's fill that with water. And again, we're going to stir with a clean teaspoon. And this is not an, this is not a standard solution of sodium hydroxide. You notice we haven't weighed it. We just take any amount of sodium hydroxide, any amount of water. And um, again, we've got to make a homogeneous solution. Can't leave any chunks behind. Like oxalic acid, sodium hydroxide is sparingly soluble. I mean, it does dissolve, but it's taking its sweet and merry time to dissolve. And there you can still see a few bits of solid at the bottom. Okay, so here's our, we want to find out what is the concentration of this solution of sodium hydroxide. Like I say, we can do nothing until the very last bit of sodium hydroxide has, um, has dissolved. Because if you've got a chunk of sodium hydroxide, it's going to add to the concentration after you've already put it into the uh, burette. So you, you must have that last chunk of sodium hydroxide must be dissolved. So here is a little piece of some sort of of solid, I'm taking that out. Again, it doesn't matter. And there is our fully dissolved sodium hydroxide solution. There it says NaOH. Now I'm going to get this burette. And I'm just going to wash that out with, with uh, sodium hydroxide uh, solution, just in case there was something else in there before. Also, I'm checking the tap to see that that's not leaking. Fine. Does the tap work? Yes. Not working terribly well. It's like it's almost got a slight blockage to it. There it's come right. And now it's gone right out. Fine, so we close this. And now we're going to fill. And be careful you don't get the stuff in your eyes. Be careful with it. It's funnel. Right, so now we're going to open this little tap and we're going to watch till the level drops till naught.
and just have a look how you can see the meniscus or the rounded part of the liquid is just touching the just touching the bottom or the zero mark I'm going to just let out a fraction more okay so that is now zeroed now we're going to begin our actual trace so we take a conical flask or an Erlenmeyer flask we're going to add to it just a tiny amount of phenol saline solution or if you like phenol saline powder just a few drops or grains so there's our phenol saline and just the tiniest few grains of that So there's barely noticeable amount of powder in the bottom there. Right, now we have something here called a pipette. And the pipette has a naught mark there. And it goes up to 25. So... This is a 25 mole pipette. We're going to put the pipette into the oxalic acid. We're going to very carefully suck. On the pipette. Now notice that you've got to be careful that as you suck, you don't lift the tip out of the water because then it's going to suck into your mouth then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly move my finger up to allow air in and you will see the water level will begin to the oxalic acid level will begin to drop and I've got to do this as slowly as possible And there I've got now exactly 25 moles of oxalic acid. And so I'm going to pour it into this conical or Erlenmeyer flask. And so there it's going in. I stir it around with the I stir it around with the um, phenol phenolphthalein powder which I added so now that's completely dissolved so now we are going to slowly open the tap and allow sodium hydroxide to come in and watch what happens We're adding sodium hydroxide and we stir or swing the flask around. And we're going to add sodium hydroxide until there's a color change. Now look, do you notice that there's a slight changing in color? with each drop it's beginning to form that slightly bluish purpley look let me get something white behind that so we're going to add some more sodium hydroxide and watch until one drop turns it do you see how I'm adding drop by drop?
Do you see how that color stays there? But it still disappears as we shake it. So we're going to continue to add drop by drop. Now that pink purpley color keeps on disappearing, but there's going to come a time when it won't. One more drop, one drop is going to be enough to make that color stay. And I think that we've hit our drop. So now that it's permanently that color, we now go and we have a look at the actual measurement and where, how much sodium hydroxide we've used. So we go and we have a look. It started at naught and it went all the way down till, and there we are on exactly, I just want to see if you can see, exactly 26 moles. 26 moles. Helps to put something light behind it. 26 moles. So now we know we have used 26 moles of our sodium hydroxide has, be, has neutralized the 25 moles that we put in from our burette of oxalic acid. So we had 25 moles of oxalic acid and 26 moles of sodium hydroxide. And so there's the color. It's now one drop turned at that permanent purple pink and now we're ready to do our calculation.